In 2012, Rwanda set off to start working on a hydropower project in Rusumo, that is the Rusumo Hydroelectric Falls Project, a project by the Nile Basin Initiative. And today, that project is almost at the finish line. My name is Murundi Sara, and welcome to Doing Business in Rwanda. Today, we have journeyed to Rusumo, Tanzania to check out the hydroelectric power plant that is by Nile Basin Initiative, a collaborative effort by the Republic of Rwanda, the Republic of Burundi, and the United Republic of Tanzania. With that, stay tuned. In this episode, we journey to Rusumo at the border of Rwanda and Tanzania to check out this hydropower plant's progress and explore the economic benefits of the project. The collaborative efforts of the Rusumo Falls Hydroelectric project is soon to bear fruit in Rwanda, Tanzania and Burundi. This project is called Regional Rusumo Falls Hydroelectric Project. It is owned by the three countries Rwanda, Burundi, Tanzania equally. NELSAP, where I come from, is implementing the project on behalf of the three countries through financing from the World Bank uh, for the power plant and also African Development Bank for the transmission lines. The three countries are going to share power from here through the three transmission lines that are almost complete to Tanzania, to Rwanda and to Burundi. The power plant is rated at uh, 80 megawatts and the three countries are going to share this power at approximately 27 megawatts per country. This uh, project of Rusumo, which was initiated like 40 years ago, yeah, uh, we picked that project from the defunct uh, Kagera Basin Organization, which was established in 1977. By the, the, the members were Burundi, Rwanda, Tanzania, and Uganda. Those are the members. So we picked that. By the time, we picked that project, we came to find, because of the power uh, deficiency of the countries and the need, um, it, it was by design during the, the under the Kagera Basin Organization, it was 40 megawatts. But according to the requirement now of the countries and the potential which we have, we take it up to uh, 80 megawatts. Right. Actually, at the beginning was 120 and uh, we reduced to 90. And the purpose is not that the river cannot sustain that, it's because of the safeguards. For a project of this magnitude set to generate and transmit electricity, not just to Rwanda, but to Tanzania and Burundi as well, there are concerns regarding sustainability of its implementation. Uh, this project is going to add uh, at least 27 megawatts into the grid networks of Tanesco Tanzania, Regides of Burundi, and Reg of uh, Rwanda, at least 27 megawatts each. But uh, what is very important is that uh, the project comes with the transmission lines that uh, are also going to link the grid networks of not only the three countries but the nail countries as a whole so that the through rusumo switch at where we are standing we have the capability to connect called synchronizing the regional networks so that we will be having bi-directional trading of energy um with this uh, project associated with it the neighboring uh, um, districts like ingara um, Kirehe and the other one for Burundi Muinga. All of those, there are this uh, project for uh, environmental conservation. There is an issue of um, livelihood, uh, community based um, projects like health centers, um, taking care of the youth, and so on. What does this mean? We want to associate the, the, the citizens, the local, uh, community to own the project and to protect for the safety of the project. Ibikorwa buri gihe by'amashanyarazi ari gihe bigira ingaruka no ku baturage batuye ariko tukoresha ko dushoboye kugira ngo izo ngaruka zigabanuke. Kubigendanye no kwishyura abaturage urugero ndetse no kumuyobora uva hano nkuko ari ubikomojeho umuyobozi umuyoboro wararangiye ubu ngubu turi Eh, ready cyangwa se dufite ubushobozi bwo kuba twatwaraye amashanyarazi nabo neka twageze ikigari ahagomba kujya 
ndetse n'abaturage bangirijwe mu bikorwa byo kubaka mu yoboro wa mashanyarazi bigeze nko kuri 98 ku ijana tubishyura abasigaye ni bamwe bagenda bagira ikibazo cy'ibyangombwa kuba barabuze ugasanga umuntu yari imutse cyangwa se nti yabonye cyangombwa kandi uziko kwishyura abaturage bisaba kuba afite cyangombwa cy'ubutaka kuri power plant ho rero ibikorwa urebye byo kwishyura abaturage byageze nko kuri 99 n'igice ku ijana asigaye bakeya cyane abeshe bagenda bangirizwa n'amazi yazamutse bitewe nuko imvura yaguye yabaye nyinshi ariko ubundi abangirijwe urukomero rugiye gutangira barishwe twagiye dutekereza uburyo bwose bushobora kugira ngo tugabanye amashanyarazi ashobora gutakarira mu nzira The Rusumo Falls hydroelectric power plant is set to create substantial economic impact and a notable contribution towards improving Rwanda's electricity penetration. Before that is achieved, what socio-economic impact has this project had on the neighboring communities around Rusumo? Well, there is a, a very uh, specific program that is part of the, com uh, of the project that is uh, aimed at supporting the local area is, uh, like community. It's called the LDP. Uh, we have had, uh, as one of the districts where the project is located, we have had uh, two phases. In the first phase, we, the health center was constructed. Uh, which uh, supports an, a coverage area of about uh, 20,000 uh, people. Uh, and uh, another uh, project that we had as part of the community projects is uh, a road that was well, more than 20 kilometers that was constructed, uh, leaking as, uh, areas that are connected to, to, to the project. We also have another uh, project in the second phase. We are going to construct uh, uh, in Kirehe district. We're going to construct uh, a, sport, a youth and sports complex. Uh, it has two components, one is the youth center for employment, for recreation and all that. And then another part is an indoor uh, sports complex for, for, for mainly volleyball, handball and, and, and basketball. So these are parts of uh, the direct benefits that the population can get from the project. But of course, there are also employment opportunities for, 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 for the project. But for in that same framework, it, 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 it benefits the, the population from the three countries, not particularly our, only, not only our, 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 our district. And of course, it, uh, as, 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 as an area where workers and uh, staff of the project live, it has also boosted the local economy. Our role on those projects, which we much appreciated the project, is to make sure the communities at the grassroots, the women, the youth, are aware about what is going on in the countries. They own the project. They put us protectors of those projects. We all know that whatever they are doing is for the people, is the communities. With more than 10 years of development officially under the Nile Basin Initiative, the Rusumo Hydroelectric Falls project is finally edging towards completion. Where we are now, we are at the final phase. Yeah, We are expecting, if things go well, the way how we, we witnessed during the tour, of the of the of the um, generating uh, station by June this year, 2023, we will be able to complete. We as NBI through Nile uh, uh, Nelsap to hand over to the company which is was established by the three countries. So this is what we are waiting, and you can see there are a lot that have been covered. The, all the the turbines are under progress. Some are complete. And so we'll go one by one, but our finishing line is June 2023. With over 400 million US dollars already invested in this hydroelectric power plant and delays due to procurement issues and COVID-19 pandemic, this project is nearing fruition. And now we're looking forward to seeing connected people, connected grids and environmentally sensitive solutions. As the 10-year-plus development project of Rusumo Hydroelectric Falls project nears completion, it has already elevated the lives of those working on the project and promises to significantly improve cross-border trade between Rwanda and its neighboring countries. Thank you for watching this episode of Doing Business in Rwanda. Let's keep the conversation going. To engage with us further, you can tag us at CNBC Africa or me directly at the Murundi Sarah.